Hello everyone and welcome back to another Apex Racing TV, ART and RLL Porsche Tagger Esports Super Cup World Championship Race. Alex Simpson, Lee Thompson here for the ART and um, RLL stream. And uh, yeah, we're a man down, Lee. Um, we need to start off, I guess, with that. Just uh, as uh, people will spot very, very quickly. Yeah, unfortunately, Johan having a, a race ban for this event after a couple of incidents last time out at the Nürburgring. But he'll be back for the uh, the final round in two weeks and uh, conveniently replaced by a dashboard for, for today's uh, <laughs> today's event. But, um, but yeah, Le Mans today, Alex. I mean, so we went from Nürburgring, say, two weeks ago, you know, epic circuit, um, to yeah, very different circuit you know it's not out in the uh, in the forest but still this monster of uh, an endurance circuit that the guys in the, the Porsche 911 GT3 cup cars are having to um, to oh. deal with um, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna have to a, a cracker I'm gonna have to stop you very quickly what's happened to Jeff like something's gone on uh. with Jeff did he get disconnected <laughs> like his camera's gone as well literally we've got a, a, a literally a screenshot of his of his butt and, and he's short seeing and I'm seeing in iRacing through that fell to unacceptable level. Oh no! So, uh, He's and actually, interesting. His his spotter disconnected as well. So I don't know if that's an automatic thing because yeah, you know, he's only allowed in there to spot Jeff, or if that's a Brazil thing maybe. You know, oh. is, uh, uh, so that I mean, hopefully the former and that they can get back in nice and quick. But yeah, both Jeff and his, his spotter are uh, disconnected. So. Fingers crossed they can uh, can get back in sharpish, but I, I guess that's his qualifying completely screwed because he's not going to have time now to, to get the lap in. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, oh, oh, right, oh, two yeah. men down. Yeah, I'll get rid of his camera for a minute because, um, I mean, I love his shorts and stuff like that, but he won't appreciate the fact that we show his butt on screen for mm. the whole race. So. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, um, it comes and goes, doesn't it? We have the problems and things like that. But yeah, fingers crossed that um, yeah, Brazil sort their internet out a bit quick and um, we get him back, back on. It was interesting that he got dropped from iRacing before the camera. Like, he frantically tried. You could see he was like, what's oh, going on? That's why he was up. Yeah, 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 exactly. We managed to get him up, but then it, then then we lost his um, connection there as well. Hmm, interesting. Um, well, well, yeah. Like so say, fingers crossed, he can he can get back to the, the back of the grid at the very least. But we'll we'll wait with bated breath. I think that'll be his camera done no matter what now, right? Because he's um he will need to actually activate something on his side to get it back for us. So exactly, that will, um, and I I think we'll just he'll see probably if he in the race or not. Yeah, I think oh, he'll exactly. probably he, forget to do that yeah. when he's rushing. And we to don't get and we don't want him to worry about it anyway. So no, exactly. So. Um, yes, yeah, so that leaves us just with um, a solitary Jamie Fluke representing Apex Racing Team, as you're seeing on track and qualifying. And uh, we've also got, of course, Kevin Ellis Jr. and Zach Campbell out there representing RRL Esports. Um, I can tell you that Kevin is coming towards the end of his lap at the minute. I'm just on board with him, as you're on board with uh, Jamie Fluke. And unsurprisingly, they're both at kind of pretty similar points in the track, being that they uh, are all in solo qualifying. Yeah, so far on the first lap, you know, not bad. I think the guys will be relatively happy with that. Sort of 9th and 13th, so they hope to improve to this one. But just to come back to your very early point, which obviously I um, interrupted, because what was going on with Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Epic, epic race um, last week. Obviously, we didn't get as much sort of movement um, as we were kind of expecting. Um, yeah, and of course, um, Kevin unfortunately having some bad luck. So did Johan again. And then, of course, with Johan's... Um, yeah, penalty now, like the, the man just having no luck whatsoever. Um, he's absolutely on the bubble. We've got two rounds to go, so he, this is really going to put him on his back foot. He's going to need to have one amazing final round of the championship to try and hold on to his license. So Ooh. is Jamie finishing up? Zach gets a good lap. So does Kevin yeah. moves forward and Jamie I mean, I'm as guessing well? Everyone's laps are going to be quicker. From I the think looks so. Of it, yeah. We'll see. We'll see where we end up. Kevin, um, Kevin had a big, big moment coming off the final chicane, so it's fortunate that actually um, the, the the finish line obviously is very, very close to the final chicane, so he didn't really lose too much momentum. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it all pans out as the, the laps uh, are coming in. The guys are getting shuffled down the order a little bit. Um, Josh Rogers currently at the top. Yeah, Rogers, Collins, he's been there all season. Seb, Warren, 
Then it's Jim. Uh, I'm seeing I'm seeing Jeff Giassi connected to iRacing in for information, so hopefully he will be able to at least take the, the start. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we won't, won't have time for uh, a lap, which is a shame. Um, no, of course. But um, especially if lap two is the faster one as well, um, he's not really going to get anything. But yeah, at least he's in. At least he's in the race and and he's got yeah. a chance. So it looks like the lap times have uh, finished trickling in. There's just a few seconds left in the session, so we'll kind of wait with bated breaths as to uh, whether anyone else jumps in at the last second. But at the minute, Jamie looking very, very strong, fifth on the grid. Uh, Zach and Kevin both got shuffled down to 15th and 16th, uh, just a, a hundredth apart, uh, Alex, between the two RL eSport guys. Yeah, nothing, bit, nothing between them. Uh, that's um, just crazy. trying to judge map. body language and things like that to see mm. how they're feeling. Because I mean, look a bit muted. Nine, yeah, I was about to say they're nearly a second off Rogers, and I, I, I don't think yeah. they would kind of be expecting well, that. So what I was about to say is, if they're nearly a second off in fifteenth, sixteenth, look at Fluke's gap on the screen on your left, half a second, and he's only in fifth place. So, like, that's a there's a crazy gap between like uh, first and fourth. You know, so that's where a lot of the time. Uh, of that one second that you're seeing yeah. is gone. So yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. There's such a big gap in those like top four positions there. But as I say, it's a long lap. So, you know, half that maybe for a more traditional lap and we're looking at more like two and a half tenths, but even so. Interesting. But yeah, Zach, I think is quite bullish going into this one of a, a decent result obviously he was not a fan last week was he of the circuit so no he just kind of made that very clear it. in his interview at the end yeah he was just kind of happy to get through it so i think he'll be uh, looking to uh, kind of drive forward with this one um, yeah kevin on um on his tail will probably be a good sight for him so we've actually got another 30 seconds left of qualifying is it i think it normally is a 10 minute run right so they've maybe made it 12 for this longer circuit here at Lamont this week so yeah 12 minute session here and then um yeah and then of course we got our sprint race and feature race uh upcoming from uh from there so um yeah again we'll see exactly how that pans out in terms of the number of laps they managed to get in of course last season alex uh drama kind of in the the first mm -hmm. attempt at Le Mans in pesk uh so obviously i racing have uh corrected that and you know they know what they're doing this time around but um yeah, we'll see how many laps that's uh, going to entail. Yeah, obviously it was uh, it was a uh, controversial, and you know some people had tested it and knew that they needed the extra fuel. Others had not. And, yeah, the race at the end, I think the the prize winnings and things like that still got handed out, but the race itself kind of got scrubbed and rerun. Um, yeah, so it was um, a big run. Obviously, our guys had done the homework, and we knew what we needed to do. Um, but yeah, so yeah, right. So qualifying has uh, has completed. So yeah, those positions that we read out uh, a moment ago have stood. So Jamie has kept his fifth place on a grid. So cracking job for him. And then Zach and Kevin have stayed fifteenth and sixteenth. So um, kind of similar to Nurburgring last week. Uh, Sebastian Job is the only guy who's really managed to get himself right in amongst the sharp end of uh, the VRS Coanda guys. But Jamie kind of uh, on the periphery there as well. So it's really only Seb and, and Jamie who's got amongst the three, five top uh, top kind of cars. Interesting that Kronke is a little way down, actually, down in 18th. Um, Graham yeah, Carroll all the way down well. in 26th. Beneke, 29th for Beneke. So that's that's uh, going to be interesting for Kevin Ellis Jr.'s Championship Challenge of Beneke there so Beneke needed a, a couple of good rounds really to try and push into the top Mitchell, sort of four uh, right there seven, yeah. yeah Mitchell's at the sharp end so yeah if Kevin Ellis Jr Mitchell doesn't he if he can yeah and and it's it's Dane Warren and Charlie Collins that he's really battling with as well so Charlie Collins P2 Dane Warren P4 so that's Kevin a little bit on the back foot for uh for this sprint race Right, just a few seconds to go now, I think. Uh, we didn't get Jeff's camera back, unfortunately. I just had a little look just to see if he did reconnect it, but no, he didn't. <laughs> no, other priorities. Right, yeah. green lights are on. You're Come watching on, Jamie Fluke. Let's, Let's see how he gets off of if on the grid. Oh, much better start for Jimmy. He bogged down last time, didn't he? So, you happy with that? Um, yeah. 
and Kevin Ellis Jr. is moving forward as well from 15th. Past, um, only past Zach and uh, Thomas as well. Yeah, Dean Warren just popping himself in there. So Jim's got someone to his right. Who's that? That's Blue to Luke. Jeremy won't get run off of there. Seb with an extremely. I think Seb with a slowdown, maybe? No? No, just. just no, Pepsi going. Pretty poor off of the um, off the exit. I don't know what that was about. Yeah. Still Jeremy Damn. side by side. This is. Not at all what these guys want. Yeah, he's got it. And um, I have to say, very clean start from the whole grid. Like, no instance of any note the whole way through. Everybody's surviving and continuing on. Maybe just uh, Josh Thompson, Jack, Jack Sedgwick dropped off the back a little bit. But um, certainly top 20 forward, all, uh, all looking good. As uh, now they work their way down a monster straight. Let's see how far that, how early they're. No, it doesn't look like they are, so they've been given enough gear ratio. It's always an issue, isn't it, that they had, I think, um, last season, that they were just sat there. Ooh. Just Kevin got attacked from behind, I think, uh, going into the I'm pretty sure. Um, seems like it didn't uh, cause him too many problems, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure Zach? the car behind didn't manage to slow him down. Yeah, was that Zach? Was that I'm not sure. Behind, yeah, maybe. So, yeah. Yeah. Or it was Pronke in here, he's dropped back another one. We'll see. Yeah, I feel like Kevin needs to make moves as quickly as possible. Obviously, he'll want to try and get towards that sort of top eight, see if he can um, get some sort of reverse grid position. Um, yeah, I know the guys are going to be battling ahead, but it's going to have to be quite forceful with it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see an opportunity coming here as the two in front of him, which is uh, Sirico and Tatala battling away. They've um, obviously been side by side coming on to the back section of the circuit and now Kevin's boxed in and what's Zach going to do is Zach's going to have to come alongside and really try and keep a bit of momentum himself so they're two by two now as they work the way down and uh, how are the guys going to sort themselves out now as, as Kevin's going to have the, uh, the inside on Zach Zach's trying to go around the outside of uh, Sirica but not quite happening so actually uh, Zach made the place on uh, on Kevin on that one yeah Jamie's Kevin's still in fifth boxed. boxed in and nowhere to go or anything like that so yeah the trouble with this type of racing draft. I mean, the guys ahead actually, um, well, they yeah, now they're still well and truly in this um, pack. But, uh, yep, Zach having a look around the outside. Yep, we have a draft here. He's going to have to hold it through this fast if you, right. If you switch back to Kevin, you'll have a great view of them battling uh, Zach and uh, Sirico in front. Oh. Uh, Zach, oh, having a little bit of a moment on the outside, just about managed to gather it up and yeah, loses out on that battle this time by. <clears throat> but yeah, looking still, it's still looking very clean, I have to say, through the whole field. Um, I'm only seeing one of the car who's dropped off the back now uh, on the whole field. Everyone else is just red and, and orange intervals the whole way through, which means everybody in the whole field are, are less than half a second apart from each other. So yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, Graham Carroll has just dropped to the back a little bit as well, down to 30th. Uh, Jeff good. has uh, gained to 26th. Yeah, seven, seven spots. This is what I was just having a quick um, look at. So yeah, good... Um job from um, Jeff, so, so I'm just glad to see him back in the race that we've been in nightmare for him. So, again, he's another one that's kind of there or thereabouts, you know, needs to have some good solid races for the rest of these two two rounds, and I feel like he will secure his spot for, um, for next year. Yep. Yeah. So it would have been panic stations for him when I um, saw that. Go and just check in with uh, Jamie, see where he is. Up behind Dane Warren is the front um, five are all, yeah, nothing between them. Good run from um, Jim off the final corner. Uh, Dane just got himself all kinds of out of shape. So um, we concede this so that he doesn't, um, they don't lose the draft. Battling through one. No, he flies in oh. there way too, <laughs> way too deep to yeah, hold it. That was crazy how deep it was. Um, and um, just behind, David Williams got a slowdown off last chicane. So uh, both Zach and Kevin gained a spot on uh, Williams as he had to drop back a little bit. Um, uh, Jesse just got past um, Ramstein okay. and Beneke, I think. Actually, something those guys had a little issue. Um, yeah, so he's... Or either they both got past... Um, there's definitely some changes. <laughs> yeah, like I say, yeah, for sure. Jeff's, Jeff's gained at least one last. more spot since we last looked, for sure. Yeah. Right, and uh, yeah, now back on to... Um, Onto the, the draft train again of uh, of the main straight, of course, just with a chicane breaking them up halfway through. 
Jamie here on, the on that rev limiter. Yep. Close up anymore at that point. And um, and Kevin and uh, Kevin's the same as well as I'm on board with him at the same time. So they're obviously uh, yeah all all going to be on the limiter, which could be a bit of a dampener onto the race really. I feel like because he's just not really going to get much happening for half the circuit, right? If they're all just on the limiter for half, you know practically half a lap, it feels like. Um, that's uh, that's a bit of a shame for the for the spectacle of what's supposed to be the the pinnacle of uh, of the i racing road series that we have here. Yeah, I you know, I'll take it back. I thought they had enough gear road yeah. show, um, but clearly they haven't. Maybe it's just that first no. first one down the mall sand though. Um, uh, I think like yeah, well uh, yeah, uh, Kevin was on the on the limiter again there. But like I say, I think maybe on lap one it wasn't so bad. Perhaps as they were you know, all just scrabbling away a little bit and. Getting up, you know, getting temperatures up to tires up to temperature and stuff, but no, for sure they're they're on the limiter now. Jeff is he's super close to uh, La Fuente ahead of him. Yeah, as long as um, as long as he's kept his cool, Jeff, I'm sure he'll be he'll be all right. He was a bit nervous about getting on the gas there. I think he thought perhaps he was going to run into him. There's a one to the left. Going to, have to, going to have to give him a nudge. Nowhere to go now. Yeah. Does, does push him past. It's the trouble. You get alongside and then suddenly the car to the side gets the side draft, doesn't he? So, yeah. I think um, Jeff's managed to get the Fuente by, but uh, Azabon's able to get the side draft and defend if the you, lease uh, from Jeff. Oh, what's going on? Switch, I'm seeing... Um, it's, uh, Ellis Jr. Yeah, if you switch to Ellis Jr., perfect. Yeah, got a great move of a uh, view of Zach just making a move around the outside there of uh, Sirico, and actually Kevin's managed to follow him through as well, so yeah, just about managed to, uh, to crawl his way past. I don't know if uh, Sirico's going to be able to hold on to that on the right-hand side. He's still there in our blind spot on our screen, and we'll see where he appears right here as they turn in. Kevin takes oh. the apex, so yeah, he's yep. fine, and if that's a spot gained for the two of them, up to 13th and 14th now. You know, I have to say, obviously, we um, everybody knows why we kind of changed the way we do to these onboard shots um, for for these ART broadcasts and things like that that we're doing. Um, but uh, it does make it a little bit more um, exciting for me, like when I'm watching it, I'm a bit more tense. Because I'm like, is he going to turn in? Is he not going to turn in? Like, where's the guy going to suddenly appear? I'm like, oh, please don't get turned. You just can't see. The beauty of, obviously, the, the broadcast cameras is we've got a good idea whether or not he was going to be clear or, or, or what. But, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm a bit more anxious What this. Yeah, for sure. And 6th uh, and 7th, Boots Loop and De Jong just switching places. So, actually, that's Mitchell dropping uh, back to his original starting position now. But, uh, yeah, Jamie's still looking, uh, looking very solid there in that spot. Yeah, not really sure what the guy, these guys can do. You know, they just need to pick off these mistakes because, yeah, there's just no good gaps. Oh, sorry, I think. A little bit of a gap, half a second for um, for Jim. Um, I don't know if he's just sort of struggling ever so slightly to keep with the um, with these guys. So they're all slipstreaming each other. I wonder if mm. um, Collins is um, actually bump drafting um, Rogers here as well. Maybe. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on the interval. See, uh, see how that looks. I haven't, perhaps I haven't noticed it getting down right to the 0.0.2, but it's doing it right now. Collins actually just coming past. So yeah, Collins uh, back into lead right as you said. Yeah, that'll hold up the little pack ever so slightly. Go through here. But yeah, obviously the comment on um, the channel there, obviously about it being a bit boring with the guys on the on the rev limiter. Yeah. Got to agree. I agree. Yeah. Seems a, seems a real uh, pretty basic error on iRacing side on that one. Um, I, I'm not, I have to say, I'm not sure offhand how much flexibility they've got gear, gear ratios. Alex, I don't know if you do, but I'm sure they must be able to put well, a, they a changed one on, it. right? They changed it for the Nordschlag, right? So, is that... Mm. You know? Yeah, not not just, just the same, oh, I guess. Oh, on, Jim, send it! <laughs> they obviously checked it. Warren checked up there. And um, Jamie full in, but then Danger's getting off the um, off the brakes just to try and defend. But ah, full on, go for it. Yeah, he's Jamie, going for it. If they're going to if they're going to just sit there and try not to run into their teammates, absolutely, you know, go for it. Yeah. 
And uh, like I said, but even, I mean, they kind of weren't sitting there that time by. So what, during that lap, we had Collins take the lead, Seb took the lead for a moment, and then Josh Rogers back in front. So the top positions now are swapping back and forth. And say so it was crazy the difference between P1 and P2 on the draft. Uh, Collins gained a half a second um, just in one of, the, one of the sections of the straight as he took the lead. It was pretty, pretty crazy. Seb's worked his way up to second. Um, yeah. It's obviously going to make it interesting. Uh, it's final lap, of course, so it is go time. It's the thing with these short races. Um, come on, Jamie got a run. Oh, he's got to go around the outside. He's been here before. Remember last season, of course, he was three wide. He was on the outside here, and he got absolutely sent. So, old Dane, he's good on the brakes. I'll give him that. And uh, just while watching that, just having a quick look at the timing screen again, Jeff Biassi, um battling for 22nd place now, making side. a couple more spots. But yeah, instant in front between uh, uh, guys just proud of uh, it's Tatella and Beckham, sorry, were scrubbed in a way as well. don't know if Jeff's going to hold on to this one, but I've got to go to Jamie, I'm afraid, because of where we are. Um, just because Jeff's not got any draft, I'm looking at the timing delta, Lafuente's coming back at him. And he doesn't look like he's going yeah, uh, to do anything. To Kevin, uh, what about yeah, let's switch Zach? to Kevin. Oh, yeah, we've got a good view there. So Zach was almost free wide coming into Indianapolis there, having a little think about it in contact oh! between uh, the uh, Lego car. Please Akum miss, everyone Tatella. miss. Jeff miss. Jeff, 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 Jeff. Yeah, Jeff oh, was free. Oh, that was Salva, I yeah. think. And another car off uh, Sanchez. Oh, Sanchez. Sanchez out as well. Oh. So it's all happening. Uh, Sanchez didn't Neke. lose. Um, sorry, they back them. Yeah, so the Legos are in? falling down. Yeah, no, Sanchez has fallen all the way to the back, my mistake. Mm. So, yeah, guys crossing the finish line momentarily, but yeah, it all kicked off there in uh, the closing seconds of the, uh, the lap. So that's uh, Jamie kept fifth. Unfortunately, nobody fell off in front of him. But yeah, Zach and Kevin suddenly jumped up to 10th and 11th. And Jeff Gassi from back of the grid, <laughs> Get 18th it, Jeff. position. 15 positions gained from his starting uh, starting spot. Cracking job from Jeff. Yeah, so, that, um, is, that is what the doctor ordered for Jeff. He's given himself you know, a chance to get some points and things like that in the feature. So, yeah, good job. And like you say, yeah, Zach and Kev getting some places right on, that, on the death there. Not quite into the um, into eighth. So Pinto mm, is the one that's going to get the reverse, the reverse grid. But Jamie in a good position. Sib couldn't get Rogers um, for, the, uh, for the front. So... Yeah, all in all, oh, yeah, that was a pretty good race. Well, it was a pretty good, like, last fifth of the final lap. <laughs> like, well, I don't know. okay, yeah. Like, yeah it was, a, it was pretty, it was pretty good in terms of the team results, sorry. If, if you meant team results, yeah, Jeff did well. Pretty much. Guys moved forward. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie. I mean, the race was boring, but yeah. The, so. the race was a bit, yeah, yeah it was, a, was a, a bit underwhelming, I'm afraid. So, I'd say it was, it was a good, clean start from the whole field. But equally, it meant there wasn't kind of much happening. Um, and yeah, I just can't, I can't believe they just sat on the limits of the whole way. Yeah, it's such a shame. So, hey, we'll, we'll have some more action in the feature race coming up in a few minutes time for sure. Because like Alex mentioned, we got the re top eight reversed. So we're going to have, you know, the Rogers and the Sebastian Jobs of the world who are going to be keen to get straight back up to the front again. And, um, and with the draft train, as we saw, it's, it's not easy because everyone apart from leaders got that draft. 100% sure, but I think that is now Rogers confirmed, right? As champ, it's got to be. I mean, yeah. looking at the points close coming enough into, last time. yeah, coming into coming to this uh, uh, round, he was yeah 130 odd, 140 points nearly in front, and uh, yeah, now he's got just one feature race, uh, sorry, two feature races and one sprint race between the two remaining rounds left. So yeah, that's that's got to be Rogers confirmed now. Um, looking very very good for him. Did, um, I didn't actually quite catch if Seb got second in the end, Alex. I don't know if he you did. did. Yeah. So, so that's given um, that's given him a big boost for his uh, challenge for getting second position as well. Because De Jong was only uh, 21 points ahead coming in, so that's um, that's given Seb a decent chunk out of uh, out of there straight away. Right. Let's just quickly um, head over to our uh, our partners, Virtual Racing School um, and Apex Racing Academy. We will be back in about five minutes time, hopefully for, well, uh, yeah, five minutes time um, for, uh, for the feature race. Stay with us. Virtual Racing School was developed to provide support to the next generation of sim racers. 
No matter if you're a rookie or veteran or what car or track you'll be racing, our goal is to provide training every step of the way. We found that iRacing can be quite difficult without proper training. There needed to be a way to prepare for on-track racing. With VRS, you can literally learn from the best sim racers in the world, including four-time NASCAR iRacing world champion Ray Alfala. And Ray Alfala is a four-time champion of the NASCAR Beginner Freeze iRacing series. Three-time iRacing Grand Prix world champion Martin Kronke. Martin Kronke becomes a three-time world champion. Rallycross world champion Mitchell de Jong. Mitchell de Jong is now champion for the iRacing Rallycross World Championship Series. And many other top sim racers. Data packs include everything you need to start learning. Our world championship coaches create the data packs by setting a hot lap or a series of fast laps for you to compare, analyze, and replicate. Data packs also include a tutorial where the coach points out techniques they use to hit the fast lap. This gives you access to the latest driving techniques and setups before you even hit the track. Sign up for a free account and download the VRS telemetry logger. With this application running seamlessly in the background, your laps automatically start syncing to the VRS website. From there, you can analyze and compare two laps of your choice, whether it's your data, the coaches, or your teammates. VRS will automatically target improvement opportunities so you can get up to speed even faster. VRS also makes it easy for you to request and schedule one-on-one -on -one or group coaching sessions. These sessions can range from 30 to 90 minutes and you can select the car, track and setup combination of your choice. Visit virtualracingschool.com today to sign up and get started. Thompson bringing you the action on board with um, all of our guys. Um, uh, of course, uh, we're excluding uh, excluding Johan because of um, his unfortunate uh, penalty for this round. Um, but yeah, Lee, um, good. Like I say, good first race for for us. Good all of points. Um, Jeff specifically after coming from the back of that qualifier, getting back up. That was an absolutely amazing um, performance there. Um, I was just having a quick pull up at the championship standings, courtesy of Sim Racing Wiki. Thank you very much to you guys there for putting that together. Um, not updated after the sprint, but uh, yeah, Kevin obviously growing into this one, five points clear of um, Dane and Charlie Collins. So I think like he's probably lost out to those guys now. Um, yeah, so he's got me. he's got some work to do really in this race to see if he can claw himself back in front of them. Beneke, fair bit behind um, yeah. them. Zach, not too far behind Beneke. So actually, Zach could have moved up ahead of mm -hmm. um, of Max. So yeah, good job on there. Graham not really having the greatest race either. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a good job. Um, obviously, yeah. Jamie, we know, had a good race. So where is Jim in the championship? 16th, just uh, ahead 16th. of yeah. Jeff. Yeah, so um, obviously gained on Pinto, gained on Bakken. Gained on Tatala um, and ever so slightly on um, Bootsloop as well. So, yeah, that, that was a yep. good, good race for Jamie. Um, so, I don't know if he's jumped these guys, but he's definitely he's getting closer to them. So, um, he's given himself some breathing room for that you know, top 20. Um, and, yeah, Jeff will have um, picked a few points as well. And with Johan not, not around. Um, uh, 
pulled away from there. Allen's obviously involved in something right at the end. David Williams has got a fair few points that he needs to catch up for his second. So, yeah, it's, I'll tell you what, it's going to be tasty final round of the season for, um, <laughs> for Johan looking at this. He's going to have to, yeah, have to drive his socks off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, as I said, how it exactly shakes out. Uh, Jamie got 15 points for his fifth spot in that sprint race, so uh, it wouldn't have been enough uh, to obviously leap uh, the guys ahead of him apart from Pinto, but it sure would have um, brought him a big chunk closer. Um, what did uh, what would Jeff have scored? And Jeff got just like a few points, like three, four points. Um, but yeah, I think for Kevin in fourth, I mean, that's looking tough now for him to try and retain that fourth spot uh, kind of anytime soon Bain Warren and Charlie Collins have jumped ahead of him now but like you say it's only really him and Zach then that I see battling for uh, the sixth spot and now with Maneke being uh, right at the back of the grid as well as uh, Carol on that time by so yeah we'll we'll um we'll see how the feature pans out in just a couple of minutes and uh, it'll be interesting to review the points again after that but um yeah, looking looking pretty good for everyone. You know, solidifying their top twenty kind of requirements to make sure they qualify for the next season, hopefully. Yeah, not sure who we're going to start the race off with. Probably, um, probably Kev actually. Maybe Jeff, I don't know. Um, they're all kind of in and amongst it. First lap is, is, is the key. Well, I think we'll go with Jeff because you know we'll be able to see something if it something goes on. Here is Jeff right now. It's the last little bit of practice. We've got about a minute left until um, we have to start gridding. Obviously, if you've got any questions for us here, want to know anything about um, any of the drivers, you know. You know we've by all means, um, ask us. But yeah, any questions you might have about the team or anything that we're doing or you know how to get involved in like these series and things like that. Anything you may want to ask, yeah, I'll try our best to uh, to answer it for you. As best we can, like you say. Um, I have to say, um, I don't know about you, Alex, but I didn't really hear a huge amount from the guys for the preparation for this week. And I wonder if part of the reason was because they just knew it was just going to be a bit of a write-off with the with the rev limiter issue, you know? I would say, yeah, they weren't really seeing... Yeah, I can imagine they perhaps weren't looking forward to this round a huge amount because they just saw that there wasn't really going to be an opportunity to move forward. Um, it was all going to be about like, qualifying. We know how VRS Coanda have... have got it absolutely sussed with their qualifying preparation and uh, i'm sure that's just what their focus was all week uh, i would imagine was was how can we match them in qualifying and then it's just everyone sitting in the draft all race and seeing who gets through the last sort of 10 corners you know well i have to say i guess we're gonna find out exactly what the preparation was like because um yeah kevin uh, ellis jr our superstar from um scotland has been um vlogging his whole week um, with the build up as well, so um, yeah, I think we'll be uh, we'll be premiering that video shortly after um, after the race today. So you'll get a bit of a behind the scenes as to kind of what's gone on and things like that. Um, so yeah, keep a little eye out for the uh, for that on the uh, on the channel. Um, but yeah, and then Jamie give his little insight on, uh, on on Twitter as well. So you know, go follow the drivers. All right, revs are building. I'm hearing lights are coming on. Come on, Jeff, get us. Stormer here, mate. Oh, look like a pretty good start. Everybody else seems pretty good around him. Um, Jamie held his yeah, position. Jamie held his spot. Mm -hmm. yeah, Pinto got a shocker. He's dropped two already. Yeah, and Seb dropped two spots as well. So Seb is trying to regain uh, ground instantly, but Zach oh. might be going around the outside of him. Oh, Seb has a big moment as well. Big step out. And uh, yeah, Zach can spot on the Seb up tonight. Looks like he's okay. You still got um, Lockwood to the left-hand side of him. Yeah, looks like he's got that spot now, I think. Oh, he's still side by side. Yeah, and I tell you what, I think Brian will get the better run here as well. So he'll have him down here. They're losing. They're almost a second behind already. Yeah, and wow. Yeah, indeed, Lockwood. Um, 
is through. They'll still be in the draft, um, but Neke is right behind. And um, uh, Kevin pressuring Seb as well, sorry to interrupt, Alex. Yeah, let's go and have a little look at that one, I think. Well, they've got a got the gap. We'll tell you if Neke seems to be alongside. Zach Campbell on Oscard in front as well that we're going to see. So Zach on the inside. Can he get it turned in and stop enough Oscars? I think going to have a high ground as they come through the midsection of the chicane, and he does. That can't quite get the drive off. He's hung in there, actually. I, I thought he uh, dropped back. Oh, they're oh, bashing. The tag. Yeah, door, banging door handle to door handle between Oscar and Zach. Seb Job is going to have nowhere to go. Goes to the left, but the grass is going to be there pretty soon, I think. And uh, let's see how they Seb's manage to try and go through. from both. He's still trying to keep his nose in there, but he has to just settle back in at the end. And Kevin, I feel like, is just hanging back a couple of attempts, just waiting to see yeah. how this pans out as they get on the brakes. I think that's sensible driving there for oh, a while. Uh, Seb. Yeah. So it's somehow oh, Sebastian Job there, just sneaking straight round the outside on Oscar. Cracking move there, I have to say. But uh, Zach is already looking to move forward and is uh, chasing down Rogers. Yeah, Here comes Kevin. Getting freight trained a little bit, trying to just tag on. Yeah, he did. And uh, glancing back at Jeff Gassi, that one second that they lost has already completely disappeared. They just gained <laughs> it all back straight away in the draft. It's all back to it's one. Sarika so around the outside of Kev here. You can't see him. There he is. Right. Oh, and uh, Zach off in the gravel, so I think Sebastian Job's going to get a good run on him as they come off the corner there as well, just uh, in front of Oscar. And we can still see, uh, like you say, Sirica there in the left-hand corner, just in that inside that A-pillar. I think Kev's got the draft with uh, Oscar, but now it's just drifting away from him. We'll see uh, see where Sirica's going to uh, appear. This is, this is Zach, so, yep, yeah, you're right. Um, so we did get him. Oh, and Oscard, is he going to get stopped behind Zach? Oh, he just does. I thought he was going to run into the back of uh, Campbell there as I was watching on board uh, behind with Kevin Ellis, but uh, just about got it stopped despite the rear protesting the whole time on the braking. Uh, Jamie did lose one spot to uh, Dane Warren at some point of the way, so he's back down to yeah. Yeah, Let's just check in with um, Jim. Looking like that's pretty tasty just ahead of him as well. He might well be able to pick up some scraps here as they're squabbling away. So, second, but I don't think that's slam dunk. To loop again. Oh, absolute freight train down there. Get up here on the inside there. Oh. So, so close, bitting his nose on the inside. Such a fast, you know, corner to be taking and that car to be on the outside. He knew not being able to track out at all. That was tough. But Jamie, uh, yeah, just about managed to keep it tight enough for that time by. So, uh, yeah, 5th, 9th, 11th, 19th at the minute for the boys after uh, almost getting to the end of that one. Yeah, unfortunately, Jeff on the uh, outside of turn two, just, that's where you put him under pressure. He lost a whole bunch of... I didn't lose places, but... Um... Ooh, Zach having a moment on the chicane. Lost a lot of time, but actually Oscar wasn't able to capitalise uh, that time. So, fortunately, all stayed as they were, and Zach should, um, should be able to get the draft back. On, uh, on Seb imminently. Well, with Kevin. Just if you wonder who we're watching, you can usually tell by the uh, the little green indicator in the um, relative tower on the left, and usually by the dashboard. Right. Mitchell um, in the lead. Obviously, that is important for him and uh, him and Seb in terms of their mm -hmm. little battle for second in the um, in the championship. Like Jamie's going to come under a fair bit of pressure from Collins and Rogers fairly soon. I like think Jim could probably hold off uh, Collins, but uh, I think it's Rogers extremely good on the brakes. That's the, the issue. Like yeah. the exit he wanted off of there, I'd have said. No, no, so they all look fairly kind of static between everyone, I think, coming through there as far as I could see. Um, yeah, Jamie uh, Jamie just closing back in on Pinto. Um, Pinto is... obviously been sh shuffled down three spots so far. Yeah, this is Jeff. Run on um, Lockwood. Got to pull out, got to go for it. Six tenths. Yeah. Oh, it's actually peaked out, look. It just couldn't do nothing, mm. you know. 
Must be so, so frustrating. frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, what are you supposed to do? You pull out and you're on the limiter. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, and then all that happened was, you know, got to the limiter as well and they just sat there, you know, side by side, not able to do anything. Oh, nice little cutback. Uh, yeah, change it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jeff on the inside a lot, but this time send one down. And uh, Jamie just gaining a spot on Dane Warren to go back up to fourth. Alex, as we're watching Jeff there as well, so good job from Jamie there. It looked, uh, looked like it was on the same corner as we saw uh, Jeff make his move. I feel like Jamie got to make moves. I mean, Dane's going to come back to him here. Ooh, oh, three they're three wide, wide for the lead. So, where's Dane left or right? Can't really tell. I say he's still left. No, he's I think he's still behind. He's behind. Yeah, he is fine. Yeah. And so yeah, definitely so, uh, um, being a bit more racy in these last couple of meetings. Obviously, it was the first time we really saw him in the top five um, at, uh, at Nurburgring, and you know, yeah, he's um, showing that those Williams boys have, um, you know, have got yeah, something. Found something. Mm. Yeah, it seems like they've just stepped it up a little bit with Zeta Ricker up the front end there as, uh, as well for him. Um, Zach Campbell's under a fair bit of pressure from Oscar at the minute as they work their way down towards um, it was a super fast right-hander and Oscar just is stick his nose up the inside as we can see riding on board with Kevin Ellis Jr. But yeah, Zach actually managed to keep the, keep the apex speed mid-corner and drive off it a little bit. We can see a blue flash of Jamie Flute just up ahead there just watching those top three cars still as they uh, finish squabbling for it for the moment. Again, having a little, having a little thing. <clears throat> that Such chicane. a Mickey Mouse little two chicanes there coming onto yeah. the the only reason the I hate it is just because it seems to cause so much random damage, you know. Mm. So I remember the Le Mans, um, I think it was a couple of years ago, like me, Johan, I think Tom were doing it. We were ridiculously quick and then like after about four laps or something like that, <laughs> there's nothing in the race. We got chassis damage, you know. Mm. It's just like, well, that's the whole thing done, you know, you can't get it. Prepared. And it was nothing you know you didn't even feel it hear it or anything and yeah so yes yeah, so i stayed all pretty status quo since um since the moves are done from uh, from jeff and jamie sort of half a lap ago as they work their way back onto the uh, the never-ending straight again uh, again, still not really any breaks in the field, so everyone's managing to stay in the draft. And in fact, I say not really any breaks, actually, we don't even have anyone off the back of the field no. this time. So all the way down to 33rd, they're uh, two and a half, three tenths apart. I was looking at the mini-map earlier and just thinking, well, that's useless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, it's just a snake, isn't it? That's all it is. Mm. But yeah, they're so close, you can't even see the numbers apart. No, we'll say there's basically no no field spread in this at all. It uh, it seems like. So obviously longer longer race this time for the feature. So yeah, right, they've got four to go still as we're at halfway through this. Am I seeing? Uh, who am I seeing challenging up ahead there? I think it was yeah Sebastian Job and Dane Warren looking super super close as they're side by side coming through the chicanes. So. It's, Seb is gradually moving his way forward in the, the Red Bull Racing Esports car. So, um, and it looks like uh, Fluke is going to come under the cosh from. Um, yeah, Josh Rogers. Rogers as well. So, yeah, Fluke having uh, to go on Fluke's Fluke. got to run on Boots Loop. Yeah, yeah. So, here we go. All changing as we're uh, we're on board with Jamie Fluke. Oh, he's, he's still, you can tell he still had the car on the inside because he just wasn't able to turn into the corner. But uh, didn't quite get the drive off either. But you should be able to hang in there as they uh, come up to the next section. Actually, kind of then gaining, and perhaps he got a whisper of draft more than um, than Boosley did. Yeah, I think, with, um, I think with Pinto just sort of moving over to the left, he's, he's sort of splitting it. Yeah, Rogers now. Oh, I'm on him. Jamie's going to have to hold it around the outside here, I think. Choice. 
Boise will lose to Rogers too. Yeah, and they're just stacked up two by two. So behind Jamie, they're, they're uh, side by side as well. And just all the cars behind now starting to stack up. Zach Campbell side by side. Kevin Ellis is side by side. So they're literally two by two from like fourth down to 12th as they, uh, as they came through the right hand of there. I think sure um, he's going to move across here and help his teammate. He does. Mm, he's yeah. just towing the guys ahead. But, yeah. I think he's going to have to really hold it around the outside or just see if it's slipping. Oh, what's going on? Warren Ooh. and Warren. Yeah, something. Yeah, on board with uh, Kevin. yeah no, Dane Warren, like you say, falling back. So, yeah, Kevin nipped ahead of him. Just got pushed down to the outside. And Zach Campbell getting pushed into the wall by uh, Seb Job. I wouldn't like to say it was, I didn't get a good enough view of it. So, I'm not saying no, Seb. Either pushed him into the wall but that was the effect that happened we'll and uh, that Zach, I think. yeah Zach got managed to, to I think just about avoid contact I can't see any damage uh, as we are but um, yeah that's cost him a fair bit of time they've dropped second back now on uh, Charlie Collins in sixth but oof, that looked pretty pretty lucky for them to, to not get we see it quite a lot where cars get connected on our racing don't we as well they easily could have just end up pulling each other into the wall and, and that would have been that yeah, that's the worst actually when you just get that tiny little overlap on the sort of like quarter panel and it just kind of like, yeah, just, you just can't get away from each other, it's the worst. It was just slightly hot to um, two there. A little bit of time, so Collins will be right he's, um, he's chuffer. Going down the um, first of the north set. And I don't know if you mentioned it already. Sorry, Alex, but yeah, Graham Carroll um, has uh, looks like he's in pit, I think, or is at the back of the field, so he's had an issue somewhere on that lap. Yeah, no, not mentioned it. So yeah, Graham, it looks like Walters as well, Benecki, all of them losing it on that lap. All right, let's see how the leaders deal with uh, deal with the straight this time by De Jong, Pinto, Bruce Loop, all just closing on each other, of course, so they're about to be overlapping. Pinto is in a really, really strong position here. All these guys are worried about tripping over mm. each other. Pinto's yep. just like, well, you know, I'll just throw it wherever. Exactly. They're going to be they're going to be worried about tripping over each other because they're teammates. They're all, you know, battling at the sharp end of the championship. Yeah, Pinto's got nothing to lose. Throw it in, mate. Get going. I can imagine them, you know, muttering underneath their breath. You know, like, ah, I should do it here. Ah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Spoiling our fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd be the same, absolutely. But yeah. Ah, go on. Let's on, have a go. Yeah, especially, you know, Roger's, Roger's not going to care. Of course, I think he's got it wrapped up. But, oh, yeah, Jamie's yeah. got a good run here, though. Maybe it's him that's going to mix it. And then the Almost. draft kicks in and just, yeah, yeah. nullifies it. Yeah. He's got to be careful here because Collins is close enough that if he tries to go wide. Collins could throw it up the inside. Oh, Jamie's trying to hang around the outside as it goes in. Yeah, it didn't quite manage to get the run off the corner. Run off. Yeah, but three wide now in front of him. And oh. how quickly oh, Jamie's closing on him. Holy yeah, where'd crap. you go here? Yeah. There's an accident waiting. This is where, of course, Jamie had a big accident, wasn't he? He was the car in the exactly. middle here. Yeah. Oh, and, what? Oh, and there's it's more too... appearing. Oh, well, there we go. Seb. Jamie scrapes through. Kevin and Zach scrape through. Does Jeff get through? I'm watching him fall down the order. Jeff is hanging on in there. Jeff, I think, survived. Oof. That yeah. could have been a lot worse. I did not see as much movement on the timing tower as I expected. I expected to see more and more cars appear. But fortunately, they, I guess they just must have stuck to the wall on the left. I think um, it was, yeah. Dane Warren just nipping ahead of Kevin Ellis during that as well. Who was that? Was that Seven, seven someone, it was wasn't boot, it? It was Bootsleep, I think. Um, so, yeah, Seven Bootsleep. Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah, they managed to so, they um, managed to survive, a pair of them. God knows so. how. I've got no idea how they're not at the back of the field and towed to the pits after that. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, and again, like Jamie will be thinking that, because like, as we're in the middle of saying, he experienced exactly that same thing last year and just got wiped out completely, right? So, yeah, he'd have been having uh, <laughs> Asia View all over yeah. it again. So, 
I didn't <laughs> see. I jumped that. off Jamie, actually. I wonder if Jamie mm. just got the hell out of there, you know? Yeah, like, he, nope. he lost a spot to Tommy, right? So so through that, Jamie's lost a spot to Jamie Collins, uh, to Charlie Collins and to Tommy Oscar. So, like I say, he had to get out of the way, and I think the others just managed to continue that, uh, that momentum, unfortunately. So that actually didn't work out amazing for us. Uh, Zach and Kevin gained a, a spot each, but, um, yeah, Jamie just losing a couple. Oh, I've got a good line through the final chicane for um, Zach. You want I, think, uh, that, um... I think Seb's got damage. He's falling down the order still, Alex. So he was 13th. Now he's down to 16th. Yes, yeah, yeah, so he just got by him up to, up to that oh, 15th that's spot. that's going to make his run for second in the championship quite difficult with Mitchell yeah, currently sat he's at falling, the top of the he's table. He's just dropping back. Yeah, falling like a stone now is Sebastian. It seemed like he was all right to start with. But, uh, but once they kind of crossed the start finish line, uh, that was it really. He's uh, fallen down. So yeah, it's not early um, for the guys to be making those kind of rash moves. I mean, they were three mm. wide, too deep, you know. Yeah. It, it looked like they were almost trying to go for like four or five spots in one go. It, it, you know. I understand on the last lap you get a bit desperate, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Always risk so, yeah, say we've, we've still got time to see that desperation ramp up again, you know, because like say the guys now have got say lap and a half to go. Um, they're in exactly the same situation where they're all going to just end up on top of each other. Um, and they've got a little bit of time for, like say, that desperation to build as they're still getting stuck behind each other. And um, I, I bet we're going to see the same thing again um, on the final lap, like you say. Pinto still in the middle of it. And just sort yeah. of hold into that top three. Rogers actually got to the front there as well, and he was in that second pack. He was alongside Jamie, right? So, yeah. yeah. That's the runs off there, and uh, Warren having a little look. Seeing the mirrors, he's edging closer and closer and closer and closer, but yeah, just can't quite get there. Jamie looking again on um, Oscar mm, Side by side in front of Jamie, I think, isn't it? Uh, almost anyway between was it Collins and Pinto I think because they come off chicane so it didn't quite happen that time and uh, Mac Backham falling down the field Sebastian Job falling down more spots so yeah, yeah it looks like Backham and, and Job are just out now really yeah Rats took the chance up I think <coughs> Mitchell where he is have crazy points gained in the final round uh, Fluke just gaining a spot on Oscar, trying to anyway, side by side still I suspect, but it's technically in front as we speak. Here we go, on board. And uh, got the spot, yeah, he's going to look, look for another one. Jamie, Jamie, Jamie! You know, I feel like you're safer on the inside, but I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of how much of uh, of safe really is there in that situation but yeah rather be on the inside than the outside is that Tommy? Is that Tommy oh it was Campbell that's um, alongside um, Seb yes yeah he's Campbell only a couple of spots around the outside yeah. of, um, of Pinto oh there they are oh, that's into the wall surely not hit the tyre barrier yeah I'm pretty no sure I have no idea how Zach would uh, oh but Jamie's pretty got damage sure though. yeah that Good. was from yeah, Tommy was actually yeah damage. just had a little Damn. side side swipe and uh, Jamie's under pressure now from uh, Warren and Kevin behind him as well. So that's going to be tough. Jamie's still got to get through that you know, the whole lap still with that damage now. Uh, if he's got any top speeds loss, then he's going to be really under pressure. But yeah, suddenly Zach, out of nowhere, moving up into that sixth spot. That was, um, that was crazy. I wonder if we jump on board with Zach. He's in a similar position. No, his car looks all right. Yeah. End that we can no, see anyway. Looks right. But it did yeah. look like him I, and Pinto rubbed into the into the tire back ever so slightly. I, so, yeah. I was on board with I was on board with Kevin watching Zach, and it was there was no reaction from the car, but it was millimeter away from the wall as he as he come off the corner. It was just crazy. Well, right. it's final so lap. Final lap. Yeah. We both oh, reacted to the spotter telling us scenario. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so 6th, 7th for Zach and Jamie, 9th for Kevin, Jeff Giassi in 15th as they have this uh, this final lap to go. Um, so they were, I feel like the top 10 were pretty lucky to survive that lap as well with um, that squabbling. I think, like I say, we, we're going to see exactly the same thing at exactly the same corner on this uh, on this final lap. Uh, let's see how Jamie copes, by the way, as we uh, come off the final corner onto the straight. Is he just going to get dropped? 
Yeah. Hopefully not. Now, so yeah. be in this one. Uh, like I say, job, job well done for um, for Jeff, you mm. know, to come from where he did. Yeah, let's see. Come on, Jim. Let's hope this is... Uh, uh, Bane Warren lit up the rears completely. Kevin's got an opportunity to get a run if he doesn't hit the limiter first. He's alongside already. Uh, Jamie needs to move across and give Kevin the draft, which he just about does. I think they're going to be on the limiter now and stuck side by side. At the moment, he's got enough clear. They're both on the limiter now. Yeah, they're just side by side. Whether or not Kevin's got enough to clear him. Being very good on the brakes. I think he has got enough to clear him. And yeah, does him. Yep. It's nice. So, yeah, and all, all just because, uh, yeah, Dane had a huge moment coming onto the straight. So, like, 45 degree angle practically trying to trying to get on the power. But actually, Kevin didn't get a great exit off that chicane, but he should be safe. I don't know. Defense versus attempt. Might just stick his nose out. To be able to get quite the run. No, staying at 700, down to 800, 900, so yeah, I think. Uh, oh, Kev just a bit deep. Ah, it's not going to be the good exit that he wants. I think no. Dane will have a, have a really good run here. So he just needs to block Actually, that inside. Wasn't super close, though, was Dane? Coming off the corner, still a tenth and a half back as they come off, so we'll see. Might be what Kev needs actually to be able to get a, you know, a good run constantly down and not held up. Ah, oh, he's up the inside, he needs to cover that yeah. off. If he holds it round the outside, they'll have the better we'll exit. Oh, what's ahead. going on? Some car off onto the gravel. Dane got that spot on Kevin, and that's Charlie Collins falling down the order who was off on the gravel. <coughs> so, yeah, net uh, net zero for Kevin, but uh, one more spot gained for Zach Campbell and uh, Jamie Fluke in front of fifth and six. Uh, Kevin trying to come back again. The same thing, so it seems like the same mistake that Kevin just made a minute ago. Uh, Dane Warren just kind of allowed Kevin up the inside there, and so um, we'll see how this pans out. Yeah, Dane's still oh, wow, Dane Warren's so much quicker through, um, through that little kink. Yeah, I'll give Dane credit where credit is due in this race. He's been extremely good on the brakes. Ooh, oh, Jamie. The guys are tripping over each other yeah. in front of them. Yeah, Jamie was lucky there as uh, Dane Warren had to kind of dive to the right to not go in the back of him. Unfortunately, he had the space to do it and Jamie, the awareness, not to turn into the apex. But um, yeah, Squabble away. I have to say that wasn't as crazy as it might have been, but here we go. Top three are side by, are all uh, three wide. How are we going to um, gonna shuffle that? This De Jong, Rogers, Oscard. Ooh, oh, they've gone. Someone's car gone. Out. De Jong. De Jong. Out. I don't want to do that. Zach Campbell sticking his nose in still. P4 trying to get that nose on. Pinto, oh. Jamie Fluke still under pressure from Day Warren. Jamie has a huge moment coming off the corner. Somehow keeps a power in. Jamie's going to run wide, pushes Day Warren off. Jamie just struggling to maintain control. Day Warren's lost two spots down to eight. Zach yes. Campbell up to third. Oh, crash in front. Where did that come from? Going to be a huge instant behind Alex. Everyone's yeah, going to get lost caught fluke. Up, I'm sure. Lost Fluke. Yeah, Fleet yeah, the up, up the ninth, so at least we've got a bit of a recovery from that. Zach, I think, is going to get a podium. So, Rogers is going to win. He's going to do a double. That will absolutely cement him with his, um, uh, with his world championship. But I think um, Zach will be happy with that. Oh, I need to spot. see what happened to um, Jamie because he fell all the way down to 21st yeah, on that. I, so, I'm that gutted was, for him. That was crazy. So, so Jamie had a, had a big moment coming... Um, Coming round onto uh, onto the off the right hander, off the left hander, sorry, couldn't quite gather it back up in time to not drift out on Dane Warren, and then all of a sudden, Jamie, like I'm on board with Kevin Ellis Jr. Jamie moves to the right, and it's just a car sat in the middle of a track. We're coming back onto track. I've got no idea where he came from. So let's have oh, a look at the off oh. There you go. Just t boned Jamie completely. That was, un that was un unfortunate for Pinto, though, because we were singing yeah. his praises all race long, like how like he was the only guy really up there mixing it properly with VRS. And um, and he managed to to do it until, you know, two corners from the end. Who knows, of course, we didn't quite, we only saw the aftermath of it, so we don't know why yeah, Pinto went off. Can... Maybe he got bumped off. But... Let's see if I can find this. Oh, you know what? It might Ooh. Upset. <laughs> Let <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> okay. me look. Oh, I'm gonna wind it back. Sorry, we'll have to look at the controls. We we'll have to do it the old-fashioned way. Who cares? That's right. We can't see the controls because of the um. Oh, true, true. You're fine. You're fine. So yeah. So let's have a look. Then did Zach drift out a bit too much? Did Pinto pinch in a little bit too much? There's a little bit 
Oh, Zach just got in. Yeah, that was a mistake from Zach, unfortunately, I think. He wasn't wasn't anything like far enough uh, ahead to get his nose in and uh, turn Pinto around. So I'm sh Zach's a good lad anyway. I'm sure when he comes in for interview, I think he's going to hold his hands up straight away and say, yeah, I, I stuck my nose in thinking there was going to be a gap and it didn't quite quite form as I as I'd hoped um that's a shame here's another on board from uh, Jamie as he gets t-boned and uh, it has you know life has a funny way of working you know uh you know teammates you know Zach Campbell is the yeah. one that kind of just stuck his nose in slightly and uh and his you know teammate Jamie Flukes the one that oh that paid the uh, well second biggest price to dip into so we will have to wait and see how stewards and penalties of things shape out. I think uh, Zach is going to um, obviously be penalised from that, um, that podium spot that he finished. Kevin should be pretty safe. I don't recall seeing anything particularly from Kevin. Jeff, uh, not Jeff, sorry, Jamie, so he had that little push on Dane Warren that only cost Dane a couple of spots. But I didn't, he didn't have any damage from it, so hopefully Jamie will be okay from that. But obviously fin finishing position for Jamie kind of makes that a little bit irrelevant anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, kind of as we said, really, uh, Alex, wasn't it? It's um, we just knew kind of how how the race was gonna gonna develop. It's that exact section of track, every lap, pretty much, and uh, and the guys just end up free wide, and it's just not a not a place really you can uh, successfully do it, you know, Cons uh, consistently anyway. Yeah, exactly. You see it every time, don't you? Every time yeah. here, um, so it's not unsurprised to to kind of see it again. Right then, um, well, we'll see if we can get some guys in for a chat. But, um, yeah, while we wait that, we'll just head to our partners again. Um, but, yeah, we'll be back in about five minutes' time, hopefully, for a bit of a post-race debrief with chaps. So, yeah, stay with us. We'll be back. <laughs> Virtual Racing School was developed to provide support to the next generation of sim racers. No matter if you're a rookie or veteran or what car or track you'll be racing, our goal is to provide training every step of the way. We found that iRacing can be quite difficult without proper training. There needed to be a way to prepare for on-track racing. With VRS, you can literally learn from the best sim racers in the world including four-time NASCAR iRacing world champion Ray Alfala. And Ray Alfala is a four-time champion of the NASCAR Pekina Freeze iRacing Series. Three-time iRacing Grand Prix world champion Martin Kronke. Martin Kronke becomes a three-time world champion. Rallycross world champion Mitchell De Jong. Mitchell De Jong is now champion for the iRacing Rallycross World Championship Series and many other top sim racers. Data packs include everything you need to start learning. Our World Championship coaches create the data packs by setting a hot lap or a series of fast laps for you to compare, analyze, and replicate. Data packs also include a tutorial where the coach points out techniques they use to hit the fast lap. This gives you access to the latest driving techniques and setups before you even hit the track. Sign up for a free account and download the VRS telemetry logger. With this application running seamlessly in the background, your laps automatically start syncing to the VRS website. From there, you can analyze and compare two laps of your choice, whether it's your data, the coaches, or your teammates. VRS will automatically target improvement opportunities so you can get up to speed even faster. VRS also makes it easy for you to request and schedule one-on-one -on -one or group coaching sessions. These sessions can range from 30 to 90 minutes and you can select the car, track and setup combination of your choice. 
Visit virtualracingschool.com today to sign up and get started. To Apex Racing TV and the Apex Racing and RLL eSport stream post race show. We're just waiting for the guys just to kind of um, uh, have a bit of debrief. Jamie finishes stream. Um, hopefully, we can get Jeff on for a little chat because he's had a great run. Um, and then, yeah, possibly, um, possibly Kev as well would be really good. I'm sure Zach will come, but of course, he's speaking to. Uh, the overlords yeah exactly yeah <laughs> um. but yeah no like i say just waiting for the guys to rock up um yeah it's a little bit uh kind of mixed feelings i'm sure for the guys after that one um say kind of two cars technically finishing in uh the top five obviously cracking result for the feature but yeah we'll see how unfortunately like, penalties things are gonna shake out we'll have to wait till kind of um next week's broadcast to report on on how those turned out really um but yeah just just big heartache for um for jamie having been so strong like not and it wasn't just like he lucked into like a decent reverse grid spot for the feature like he was you know right up sharp end in the sprint up there in the feature as well um and then with yeah you know 20 seconds of the uh, of the lap left uh, unfortunately I mean, that, that was pretty it. much sums up jamie's season like anytime mm. he's been towards the front he just got involved in something, you know? Yeah. That's totally not his fault. Like, that was just completely out of his control, just a car, just, you know, that really just sums everything up. You know? so, yeah. All right. Um, we are joined um, by Mr. Kevin Ellis Jr. that would have had an absolute um, perfect view of kind of what was going on on that, first, on that final lap, like when absolute all hell broke loose. Let me just bring him up onto the... <laughs> to the main screen um ah, hello sir hello how are we doing yeah yeah good 
look a bit hot, mate. It's I'm a bit yeah, I'm a bit exhausted after that. It was uh it was all kind of calm and plain sailing there for the most part, and then that last lap everything just kicked off, which you know, me and George kinda knew it would, but um yeah, I had a bit too good of a view of that final crash, unfortunately. Um yeah, I just tried to follow Jamie through it because I thought he'd have a better view of it. Um and I ended up just going straight through the back of him and when he hit Diogo, I kind of went through the back of him and, and forced him off. But having a look at it, Diogo's rejoin is, is terrible. It's one of the worst things I've, I think I've ever seen. So if he doesn't get a race ban for that, I'll be, uh, I'll be pretty upset because he's, although, yeah, he's been tipped around, he's just kept his foot in it and he's just come straight back onto the track and wiped out a bunch of cars. Um, yeah, there's, there's no need for that. Just hold the brake, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't see it on that. Obviously, we were looking at what caused it rather than the aftermath of it. So, yeah, yeah. which I'm sure the, the stewards will have a little little look for sure. Um, I mean, I was looking at um, points and things like that going into this one. Obviously, we know off the back of um, Nurburgring, it was not at all what you wanted. Um, and it's definitely yep. put you under the sort of the pressure for that sort of, you know, you were perhaps looking at third, fourth, fifth, something like that this season. Um, yep. And yeah, it's pretty right in the mix. Um, but yeah, so obviously a few of the guys having a good first race, um, but then some of them not having such a good second one. So Actually, I think it kind of ebbs and flows. I'm waiting for like some racing wiki to <laughs> to update so we can see where you oh, might be. Um, yeah, honestly, like, updated, sir. honestly, it, it's not a bad day all in all. I, I'm still missing something in qualifying. Obviously, like starting 16th isn't really good enough. Um, I lost like three tenths in the last sector alone. Just little lazy, little lazy mistakes. Um, but you know, in the race, we kind of played it safe in a P11 and a P5. I mean, it's it's really not too bad at all, especially when you consider. Graham was quite close behind us, and he, I think he crashed. Uh, yeah, he came dead last. Seb crashed. Uh, Benek had issues as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Mac was kind of close as well. I think he was in that kind of range. Like for me, down to like Alejandro on eleventh, it was quite tight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Collins as well, and then sort of yeah, Mera as yeah, well. Yeah. Charlie to sort of bounce back on. Charlie and Dane were the two main ones I was kind of worried about. Like there was like a forty-point gap from Dane back, so I, I could kind of not really worry about those guys so much. It was more Charlie and Dane, and obviously the Q pace that those guys had put them in in good position for the sprint. Um, but I think what happened to Charlie at the end there, we might just outscore him, or if not, it would be tight. Uh, uh, I think, no, I think you did. Yeah, I think you did. Look yeah, at this. Um, I think Dane will still outscore us though. So seven. You're no, you're seven points clear of Charlie. Mm-hmm. And you're three points clear of Dane, so you're still in that fourth. So final yeah. round of the season. Okay, it's gonna be we've just uh, hung on. It's gonna be <laughs> exciting. I know you weren't meant to be looking at the championship standings and stuff like that, and here I am just telling you exactly where you are, so you know what you need to do. No, uh, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard. It's hard not to look at them at this stage in the season. I will be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's it's a pretty good position to be in. You know, fourth, fifth, sixth, anywhere in there is obviously kind of where, where we were last year, and to even be fighting for fourth going into the last round, considering. We've had like three DNFs this season, which is more than I've ever had in the last four years combined. Um, I think it, it definitely shows something. Um, I've after since in Lagos, I've really not felt like good in the car. It's been it's been a, a really tough grind this season to try and you know keep my head up and keep driving this thing every single day. But um, yeah, when you get good results like this today, it kind of it, it it takes the sting out of things a little bit when you think about obviously last weekend was the double dnf and that was really that was really tough to take uh but to you know bounce back with a p5 i mean that's uh yeah that's uh that's really good that's what you needed yeah I yeah mean, exactly yeah you say you struggled but you this surely must be your record season for podiums right uh for sure yeah i think the the formats definitely helped things you know i, I definitely didn't um queue in the top eight as much as i finished in the top eight in the sprint so i was kind of reversing into like a podium position in the feature yeah, yeah. and just with how the draft plays out it was quite easy to to just sit behind people there's not really any dirt air and there's a whole lot of draft so you know emily was like a perfect example where we just let rogers by and just let him pull me and alejandro away and break the draft to Benek behind so we were basically guaranteed a, a podium so that's kind of how we played things this season was just once you're in that position, just kind of sit there. I mean, Montreal, again, was a perfect example. Top three breakaway, and you, you just sit there. Um, and I can just kind of drive at 75% and not really have to push at all and still keep up. So uh, I think the format's probably helped um, in terms of those podiums, but I'm not going to complain. You know, everyone's got the same everyone's got the same car, the same draft model. It just depends how you play it. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll take positives from that for sure. And uh, hopefully, hopefully Monza will be a, a nice clean round again and we'll, we'll walk away with a, a good chunk of cash. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, well, um, a week's break and then then in it, it and 
that's the season done and over with. I mean, uh, it seems like this championship has gone so quickly. Um, here we are, just yeah. you know, first week in, well, so second week, I guess, in April um, now. But um, yeah, so we've got uh, we've got a year to um, to have a bit of fun and do a load of other events and things like that. So yeah, it should be uh, it should be exciting. But um, uh, before I kind of let you go, anyone you want to quick give a shout out to and any kind of like final thoughts and um, you know. Um, you've already kind of sort of said what what you want from the last round, so uh, yeah, over to you. Yeah, uh, first off, I just need to give a huge thanks to everyone on the team. Uh, you know, we I think our race car was really good. I think in qualifying we might have missed something. I was hearing from George on what Commander were doing, so I think we I think we maximised the direction we went in. We just uh, I think we just missed a slight something on the warm up lap. Um, but I think overall the race car was was amazing. It was the best car I've, I've ever had at Le Mans. I had absolutely no issue. Um, putting the car where I wanted and, and, and everything else. So, yeah, a huge thanks to all the guys on Apex Racing Team, everyone in, who's a part of the, the Apex conglomerate, the ARTV, Apex Academy, uh, Apex Racing Leagues, SDK, all those guys. Of course, RLL as well for, for being on board for this season. It's been awesome to, to drive with that kind of name on the car. It's been, yeah, it's been a, a real pleasure and glad we could bring home another good result for them today and, and uh, hopefully all the best to those guys in the, uh, the IndyCar testing that they're doing at the minute. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just a big thanks to everyone at RLL, Apex Conglomerate, all the all the drivers uh, and the team, and uh, everyone who's kind of been supporting us this season as well. All the I know there's a big watch party every week in the Apex Racing Academy Discord, so it's pretty cool to kind of jump in and talk to those guys after the races and, and chill with them. So yeah, a big shout out to all those guys as well. Uh, awesome, thanks, mate. Um, well, yeah, uh, enjoy the rest of uh, rest of your Saturday and your weekend, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you in a couple of weeks' time for the final round. Well, do thanks very much, guys. Take care. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, referring to Apex as a conglomerate from now on, by the way. That's, Alex, that's it. After, that is um, what Kevin I'm going to bring do. that to my attention on yep. that interview. That is us. We are a conglomerate. <laughs> and uh, one of the um, one of the members of that conglomerate that I can't pronounce <laughs> is, uh, is Jamie Fluke. Hello, sir. Hello. Well, <laughs> here we are oh. again, Jamie. Here we are again, you know. Um, what what can you say? Like, yeah. Um, uh, if I if I had a I we can say that. <laughs> yeah, if I had a gif that I could do, it would be that Mr. Bean one, you know, where um he's uh with the Lewis and um Massa crash. That is my facial mm. expressions watching what was happening um with you on that final lap there. So I, oh. I can not quite do a gif, but I can do this for you. No God! <laughs> <laughs> no. Please, no! 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 Is the string going to get a copyright strike? No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, well, um, yeah, it all comes down to the last lap in a race like this. And once again, I can't quite get on the right side of it. Um, I thought I got away with it, and then I didn't. Uh, I had nowhere to go. Got, you know, basically put as the meat in the sandwich with a spinning car ahead that doesn't know how to hold its brakes. And... You know, guys behind who can't see what's going on. And to be fair, I don't think I was ever avoiding the incident with how he swung back across the track. Uh, there was no way I could predict where he was going to be when I was going to get there. So, yeah, um, not the happiest day at the office, but um, some promising things to take from it. So I've got a little bit of speed back. I felt good going into this. Qualifying lap was good. First race was good. And bits and pieces of the second were good so i don't think i drove badly again i've kind of fallen on the wrong side of things but it uh it sets me up a little bit better moving into uh monza in a couple of weeks time yeah i mean again we've been keeping an eye on the um you know, on the championship and things like that and actually yeah it, i mean it would have been it would have made you quite safe i feel i still um, think i'd Almost am safe. Yeah, it. it's, yeah, it's no, close. you're right. Actually, yeah, Sarika twentieth, one hundred and thirty. You want one hundred ninety four. I think you might be right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, it's David and P twenty one who you know technically we need to look at yeah. it in one, two, three. So, yeah. um, now obviously, if I had avoided the last shunt there and picked up a top five, then that's an extra uh, thirty. Sorry, twenty nine points, which would get me. Yeah, you know, okay, one place higher in the standings. Like I can see the standings now. It's um, so we're up to 14th, which is about as high as we've been pretty much all season. Um, we'll take it. 
Um, but yeah, I, I was going into this race sort of looking forward rather than over my shoulder for the first time. Um, I sort of backed myself that, you know, if I score reasonable points here, then I don't have to worry about the, the drop or anything like that. So um, given that gap of 61 points to P21, I think I'm in good shape. Um, like I say, it's just all you just need is that just just score some points, and I think you're, yeah, you're gonna be good. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, th I think you'll take that for the season that you've had, you know. <laughs> yeah, for the season that I've had, and considering a lot of the misfortune that has been inflicted my way. Uh, now, yes, I haven't driven brilliantly this season, and I will put my hands up and accept that. Like I've really. <laughs> For most of the season, I haven't been as good as I should have been. Um, but I've worked out why, and the last two rounds are sort of a product of, you know, changes that I've made to try and regain a bit of a competitive edge again. So, um, you know, ninth, ninth, fifth, and then taking out from fifth at the end. You know, it's, it's showing that we're pointing back in the right direction. So, um, yeah, I'm obviously disappointed with how the first, you know seven rounds of the championship largely went but um we're salvaging something at the end here so that's that's not too bad awesome right mate well thank you very much um no problem. any sort of uh yeah closing thoughts thank you team all that sort of stuff um yeah where's yours yeah no worries um since we're using the word conglomerate and i'm more than happy to <laughs> use that at any given opportunity um uh, yeah i'd like to thank the uh whole conglomerate for all the uh efforts uh in, in making everything happen here um for once actually like i actually contributed positively to set up changes so i feel like i finally pulled my weight on this one but all, 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 the, all the guys you know chip in with with all their help and that's um what makes us generally so strong as a unit so, so that's all been great um did, did Kev cover the sponsors? Sorry, my head's a little bit mush at the minute after all that. Actually, no, you didn't, didn't give them a okay. shout out, so uh, I'll leave Okay, so, so the Simputers to SDK Gaming, to the Apex Racing Academy, to Apex Racing Leagues, uh, to ARTV, which is what everyone's listening to and I'm watching on right now, so um, y'all are here. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, uh, the, the Academy, which does brilliant work. Um, and I'd also like to thank, yeah, the, the entire Apex MSI conglomerate. Um, yeah, the, the work that we've done this season has been really good. And hopefully we can finish off the season strong. Thanks, Jimmy. Yep. No worries. Best, mate. Have a good one. Yeah, and we'll catch you in a couple of weeks. Cool. Take it easy. Cheers. Let's see if we have uh, Mr. Zach Campbell kicking about. Hey. There we do. Hello, sir. We did. Yeah, welcome. Hi, how are we doing? Yeah, good. Welcome to the booth. Um, you know, my um, my nerves have settled down a little bit now. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, <laughs> crazy. Um, a crazy couple of final laps there in both of them. I mean, in the first one in the sprint, you and Kev were able to pick up you know a whole chunk of points uh, or positions, and that final one, I think you guys were probably what about. 13th, 14th, something like that, going into the final lap, and then what we 10th and 11th, I think. Yep, um, that'd be correct. Yeah, um, so that was good. And then, um, but yeah, a, a good little race for you in the sprint, though. You managed to pick up quite a few um, sort of genuine places, you know, a few great moves around the outside and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just an absolute lottery, isn't it? This this circuit on this final lap. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's uh, it's was probably my worst track. I felt like coming in. Uh, I think the qualifying effort kind of reflected that. Um, but yeah, I I mean it was just the style of racing. This pack style of racing seems to suit me for whatever reason. Uh, Interlagos was a lot of the same in terms of just judging checkups, trying to move through the field, uh, going in the line where there's the least amount of cars under braking. Um, and yeah, I I mean it suited me. Uh, got to move up through the field, which was nice. Um. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the one thing that I do have to say is I feel really bad about what happened uh, with Diogo on the last lap. Um, I said on the iRacing broadcast, but I was just trying to peek him a little bit, um, just kind of see if I could spook him off the apex, get him a bad run off the corner, and try and uh, get him into the chicane. But I just misjudged it, um, tried to get back to the throttle at my normal point. I uh, didn't realize how fast I was closing. I just turned him. Um, it was completely my fault, uh, 110%. 
Um, I I feel awful about that. Um, and you know, it's just one of those things um, that happens. But I I hate to see it happen. I don't like to get um, get spots and get podiums that way. Um, it's just not not something I'm a big fan of. So. Yeah, we thought you would. That's kind of um, how you would come across in the um, in the interview. So at the end of the race, so yeah, just like I say, when everyone's fighting that hard, yeah, it's just it's easy to make those um, just to make those little mistakes. But yeah, all credit for you know for, um, for I guess the hands up and, and saying about it at that point. So um, yeah, I mean, just with the way the system works with iRacing, I'm not defending uh, this or anything like that. Um, obviously they'll look at it. You'll get probably some penalty points and things like that. Is that going to come into play mm -hmm. at Monza? Is that something you got to have to worry about? It will, especially with Monza normally being carnage. Um, it's it's something I'll have to think about. Uh, but it's not going to be in the forefront of my mind. Um, realistically, you're not going to get, uh, you're not gonna get like a quality penalty or anything like that. Um, if no, you get deemed no. You're not far enough on the point. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of those things. Um. And um. Yeah, I mean, like I said on the iRacing broadcast, I'm um, probably end up sending my money to to Diogo, um, just because, uh, just because I feel bad about it. Um, you know, I, I I've heard that he wasn't exactly driving the cleanest this race, but that still doesn't defend what I did, um, and that still doesn't defend kind of um, how that ended up. So, it's just it's unfortunate. Um, it's just something that. I didn't want to have happen, and it, I, I feel bad because it's almost kind of clouding over what I thought was a very good race. Um, coming from P15 to P3, you know, through the sprint, the sprint and then the feature was awesome. Uh, I really enjoyed it, actually, way more than I thought. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I just feel bad. Um, you know, uh, it's it's just one of those things that you know happens, but you hate to see it happen. And yeah, of course. Um, that aside. Looking at points and things like that, you know, you closed in. Just closing on Tommy. Maybe not. Tommy, uh, Tommy actually race. passed me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tommy had a good race, didn't he? Uh, meeting, mm -hmm. um, but have clue. Sort of got some breathing room for Max, who we were talking about last week. Mm -hmm. Um, now because yeah, he had an absolute shocker. Um, yeah, so you know, seventh, maybe six if something happens to like Collins or Warren, and they have an absolute shocker final round of the season maybe yeah. like a six or a fifth could even well well actually mathematically yeah. you could still be on fourth you know so yeah I, those I, three yeah. tangle and take each other out in both races you know is you have a good race it's possible yeah yeah absolutely uh, i think we'll see um you know i'm not there are no guarantees here um nothing's ever guaranteed so we'll kind of see how this ends up um yeah i mean it's just it's exciting going into the last round um, when this kind of opportunity. I know we pulled really far on Max and Graham, uh, and I think me and Tommy are very close in points now. So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see. Um, but yeah, Mons is going to be interesting <laughs> to say the least. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see how it's that like goes a mini. It's going to be like a mini version of this, isn't it? You know the yeah. The, you, mm -hmm. I mean, at least you won't peak out there right i mean that was the most frustrating thing watching it was just you guys just all sitting there bouncing off the rev limiter um yeah. i think at monza you won't quite have the chance of that so if you get a good run on someone you will actually be able to kind of get it done yeah yeah you can actually take it there i mean here there were a few times especially in the sprint more than the feature where i get to somebody and then i'd just be on the limiter and i couldn't pull out and make a pass um so That'll be interesting at Monza. I know Monza was quite chaotic last year, and so we'll see how uh, see how it is this year. Um, I'm excited, really. Uh, um, yeah, I think it'll be uh, it'll be extremely interesting to see kind of all what goes on there and uh, how everything shakes out. Yeah, awesome. All right, um, before I let you go, um, anyone you want to give a quick shout out to? All right, as always, uh, everyone at RLL Esport. Um, Everyone at Apex Racing Team, MSI Esports, for the hard work they put in. Um, everybody uh, who helps make this happen. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, I really enjoy being here, and I really enjoy working with them. It's uh, it's definitely uh, definitely something I won't forget, and uh, something I'm just um, I'm really really happy about. Awesome stuff. Thanks very much, Zach. 
you enjoy the rest yeah. of the weekend, mate. And um, yeah, we'll catch you uh, in a couple of weeks' time for the final round of this season. Yeah, no worries. Thank you so much. Cheers, buddy. See you again. See ya. Right, last but not least, if he's there, are you there, Jeff? Yep, yeah, I'm here. Are hey, you not alone? No, Matteo's here as well. Yeah, hello. Um, uh, maybe he cannot hear you, but ah. he's going to get his phone so he can hear you. What's, the, what's, what's with the deal? You guys always shorts. Is it hot over there at the minute? Uh, it is really hot uh, at the moment. And uh, he's wearing the jacket because the other shirt I have, it's uh, on the laundry. So um, the only the only wear we have at the moment is the jacket. So he can use the team uh, well, uh, correct. I appreciate him sweating, sweating out and wearing it for us then. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jeff, qualifying, yeah. you just sit, sit down, you just start your lap and all hell breaks loose. Um, I take it just... Yeah. Um, obviously, we saw the fact that um, so disconnected as well. Now it makes sense because he's there with you. So, yeah, I guess it was just you that had lost the internet. We thought all of Brazil had lost internet for a moment because both of you dropped at the same time. Um, but, yeah, we, um, we got an extremely good shot of your butt as you stood up to try and sort out whatever was going on. <laughs> on. So definitely worth watching, uh, watching that one back. But, um, yeah, yeah. Um, of course, that killed your qualifying chances, but I'm just really happy just to see you get connected, uh, at least for this one. Yeah. Um, so in the qualify, I had a had a connection issue, and I was already past the final chicane, already on the final straight. And a few meters before the start finish line, I disconnected from the session, and I just uh, reset the the modem and uh, come back to the server. And try to do another kill lap. I knew it was not going to be possible, but uh, at least I had to try it. And in the end, it was good because the car was shown quite a lot on the broadcast because I was the only one left on track. Yeah. So that that was that was good for for media. And um, starting from P33, I asked Matheus. Uh, I said Matheus actually. I asked him, "Hey, should I just full send and don't care since I'm not in a a, a position to score points?" Or should I just take uh, the safe option and try to get as many positions as I can without risking myself too much? And he said, yeah, don't take any risks. I know you're not scoring any points, but um, if you can score a single point, it's better than put yourself in risk and end in your race right there. So that's what I've done. I was the most aggressive that I could without a put, putting the card in a bad position and could gain like 15 positions in race one. And by the end of the race, it was like 20, 23 positions, I believe. So many, many positions and so happy with it. And really proud to be able to put that car in the, in the right place at the checkered flag, top 10. And big thanks to Matheus. He traveled all across Brazil, uh, came in my apartment. And now we are uh, doing like many tests together, looking at data together and and learning the best that I can. He, he sat on my rig and said, hey, Jeff, your rig is... Uh, your setup it's too bad like in terms of steering wheel and everything and he just spent like uh two entire days uh configuring my entire sim uh to a way that that's better and it, it worked it worked i went from p33 to p10 so definitely uh helped help me a lot yeah awesome stuff um so yeah so perhaps some getting used to that's going to be needed now so um, what are we talking, like slightly different seating position or have we just changed like the Newton meters and the force feedback on the wheel, things like that, just to try and dial it in a little bit more? Uh, so the force feedback has been entire uh, changed uh, from what I've, uh, I've been using before. I had a, it was super aggressive. Uh, I could not get any smooth feeling. So every bump, everything that I go through, the, the car tends to overreact and he completely changed it and change uh, the, the, the rubbers on the pedal as well. Said, hey, Jeff, I, I think your rubbers are not uh, placed correctly. And lucky you sent me some, some rubbers early this year. So I got those and, and replaced in my, in my rig. And there you go. It's, it's better. So I have better brakes. I have better uh, force feedback. And even the clutch is better, which helped me at the start. So 
Um, the rig is 100% uh, rebuilt. Uh, sitting position is still the same, but it's more about the configuration itself. Um, turns out uh, I was when I steered to the right in game, it was doing faster than when I steered to the left. So that's how bad it was, and he fixed uh, pretty much everything. And the only things he didn't fix is that was going to be a big change, and he didn't want it to do like two days before the the race. But we are fixing it now for for the final race at at Monza. Oh, well, let's see how that uh, yeah how that pans out. Um, it's amazing all the little details that make the difference. You know, once you start really fine tuning, and I think there's a lot of there's a lot of more casual sim racers out there that actually don't realise the importance of just getting everything sort of fine tuned and set up properly. So you know, from like getting your field of view set up right, getting your force feedback, getting the brake force factor right, and all these things, you know, just make such a such a huge difference. And it just goes to show, even at the, at the level that you're at already, that, you know, um, there's, there's someone there that can just give you a little bit of advice that maybe will help out. So, yeah, well, it's a shame we didn't see some, some full potential with the qualifying, but hopefully for, uh, for, for Monza then. Yeah, yeah, I'll go the best that I can for Monza. Uh, today I had an incredible pace. Uh, woke up really fast today. Uh, doing uh, the, the entire team was really quick, and we were all in the same tent. So in qualifier, I could be up there because the the pace was there, and I was in a, in a different strategy. I went for a two lap strategy, so different from everybody else, but could keep the same pace. Uh, so I was really happy with it. And now let's go for let's go for Monza. Uh, just have to keep improving and. And we'll get uh, in a maybe look dream of a top five finishing position. That would be amazing. I'm going to see if I can get um, Matthias in on this. I don't know if he can if he can talk. It left me through his phone. Oh, see him, see him. He, that's it. Yeah, I can pass, pass the him the headset. Yeah, pass yeah. the headset over. I just put the, you on my phone. So yeah. 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 Um, thank you for uh, thank you for jumping in and uh, yeah and traveling all the way to. Uh, to see Jeff and helping him out. It's good to see you guys um yeah both on the um on the camera and that. And um yeah, obviously uh, uh if anyone didn't know, obviously um Mateus joined us about um midway through the uh through the season and um has really helped us and pushed us in different directions with um sort of setups and things like that and we've got to give you a big thank you I think for um for how the um, Sebring 24 car was, because I remember seeing the uh, the comments, um, that how good the setup was, that um, you you sort of tweaked just the day before the um, before the race. There, I mean, a, a shame what happened in the race, but uh, at least we uh, at least we got a win with um, Scott McLaughlin and um, yeah, uh, Jared and, uh, and um, Brandon as well. Yeah, uh, I'm really glad I'm able to help the team and also, yeah, to have this opportunity to work with uh, top level drivers in sim racing. Uh, it's uh, always working uh, in a high performance environment like this is, uh, pushes me a lot, uh, gives me a lot of motivation. So being able to do it here is just uh, a pleasure for me as well. And um, just while we're on air as well, I'll have to remember that I uh, I need to send you, <laughs> I need to send you some tax money, don't I? Because of the blimmin import fees for all this merch that we've sent you yeah yeah uh it, it, they've never returned my call uh asking okay what's the procedure like to get this uh these merch going so yeah uh, as soon as they can fix the their issues uh, we can surely move forward on that <laughs> crazy crazy world hey and triple the price for an import of a t-shirt you know so, but uh here's what it is Um, right, guys. Thank you very much for um, for jumping in. Always a pleasure to have you uh, have you in here, um, Jeff. Good luck in the uh, final round of the season. You know, points are looking really good. You look quite. You've got quite a margin now on like Dave Williams in twenty first. So just a nice clean run. Have some good luck at Monza, and I think you'll be you'll be nice and safe um, for next year's World Championship. Yeah, thank you. I'll do my best and try to keep my nose clean. Uh, actually, the entire car clean <laughs> for the next one, and yeah, I'll keep focused and and let's see what what we can get. Um, hopefully, keep the license. Uh, not a big problem if we don't, because I'm quite sure 
I'll, I'll keep the effort into the next qualifier. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, let's push as hard as we can for the next race and see see you guys uh, in two weeks from now. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, guys. Yeah, have a good one. Enjoy the weekend, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you in a couple of weeks' time. Yep. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Yeah, see you guys. Right then, um, Lee. Um, pretty much brings us to a close. Yeah, sure does. Uh, say so what a what a frantic uh, last few corners in both the sprint and the feature. You know, sprint was pretty good overall. Feature a bit tough for a couple of the guys the way it works out. Uh, I think you nailed it on the head what you said earlier. Monza, I think, is going to feel quite similar in lots of ways, isn't it? You know, just um, a shrunken version, really. So. Hopefully, uh, did, did Zach say that he was happy they wouldn't go on the limiter when you asked him? Or... I think so, yeah. I think he said he'd yeah. be all right, yeah. So, fingers crossed, then actually we'll kind of get a bit more of what we we're hoping for this week, where we'll actually see, yeah, a bit more a bit more action. The guys don't have to be quite so desperate with their moves. And um, and we'll have a great race to finish off the season. Uh, fingers crossed for, for Kevin, you know, securing that P4 in the championship, which would be you know, a pretty, pretty amazing result for him and uh, and the rest of the guys. Um, hanging on to you know, the spots that are in, making sure they're secured the top 20. We hear that we think that due to uh, Johan's ban today and the points that have been scored by the drivers around him, uh, he's going to have missed the cutoff for the top 20, even uh, regardless of what he scores for the next round. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, on that note, we will, um, we'll wrap this stream up. But thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in. Thank you for the host as well that we had during that one. And um, yeah, we'll catch you for the final round at, uh, at Monzo. Enjoy your weekends, everyone, and we'll see you then.